Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Muna Yadav and in this video we are going to learn about condensers and evaporator. So the main function of a condenser in a refrigeration system is to cool the high pressure superheated vapor coming from compressor and thereby to convert the vapors into liquid. Thus it exchanges heat from the refrigerant to the cooling medium which is mainly air or water. Now classification of condensers. So condensers are classified based on external fluid as air cooled condenser, water cooled condenser and evaporative condensers. So first of all air cooled condensers. So in air cooled condensers air is the external fluid which is used for extraction of heat. Air cooled condensers are generally classified into natural convection type and force convection type. So first of all natural convection type of condenser. So this is the diagram for wire and tube type condenser which is generally used in small refrigeration system. So here we can see that this is the refrigerant inlet and this is the refrigerant outlet. These wires are nothing but the fins provided over these tubes. So these type of condensers are generally used in domestic refrigerators. As we can see that there is no any other medium of heat extraction. So this is air cooled condenser only. So next is force convection type of condenser. So this is the force convection type which is known as plate fin and tube type of condenser. So these are nothing but the plate fins which are provided in between these tubes. So this is the refrigerant inlet and this is the refrigerant outlet. Refrigerant flows in this way and these tubes are embedded in between the plate fins. So a fan is provided here in order to enhance the movement of air. So that's why it is called as force convection type of condenser. No any other medium of heat extraction is there. Therefore it is also air cooled type of condenser. Next are water cooled condensers. So in water cooled condenser water is the extraction fluid which is used for extraction of heat from refrigerant. So depending upon the construction water cooled condenser can be further classified into double pipe or tube in tube type, shell and coil type, shell and tube type. So double pipe or tube in tube type of condensers. So this is the diagram where we can see that there are two concentric tubes. So the inner tube is for coolant and the outer concentric tube is for refrigerant. So the coolant enters from the internal tube in this way. It moves and then it goes out from this side. So the outer tube is meant for refrigerant. So this is the refrigerant inlet and after heat rejection the refrigerant goes out from this direction. So this is double pipe or tube in tube type of condenser. Next is shell and coil type. So this is very similar to the previous one because coolant is entering from this side and it is leaving from this side after the heat extraction. Refrigerant enters into the shell from this side and it rejects the heat to the coolant and it moves out from this side. So this is nothing but refrigerant outlet. So this is the shell and coil type of condenser. Next is shell and tube type of condenser. So this is the diagram for shell and tube type of condenser. So this is the shell which is having tubes inside it. So it is a two pass shell and tube type of condenser because the coolant when it is entering into the shell it is passing two times through the same shell. So this is the one first pass and this is the second pass. So these are the coolant tubes. This is the coolant inlet and this is the coolant outlet. Coolant moves from these tubes in such a way and this is the second pass. This is the outlet for the coolant. So refrigerant enters from this side and these are the baffles which are provided for better circulation of refrigerant. So refrigerant moves in this way. It completes the whole shell area and then it moves outside through this side. So in this way the heat exchange process between the coolant and the refrigerant takes place in the shell and tube type of condenser. Last is evaporative condenser. So the evaporative condenser uses both the air and water as the condensing medium to condense the hot vapor refrigerant. These condensers perform the combined function of water cooled condenser and a cooling tower. In its operation the water is pumped from the sump. So this is the water sump and here is the makeup water. The air enters from this point 
this is the refrigerant inlet and this is the refrigerant outlet so this arrow represents refrigerant inlet and this arrow represents refrigerant outlet these are the water spray this is the drift eliminator and these are the air blowers from these two points the air moves outwards so this is the blower motor this is the water pump in order to provide water for water spray so in its operation the water is pumped from the sump to spray header and sprayed through the nozzles over the condenser coil through which the hot vapor refrigerant from the compressor is passing the heat transfer from the refrigerant through the condensing tube falls and into the water that is wetting the outside surface of the tubes takes place the heat transfer from the refrigerant through the condensing tube balls and into the water that is wetting the outside surface of the tubes takes place a fan draws air from the bottom side of condenser and discharge out at the top of the condenser so here air is taken into this system and from these points the air move outwards this system the air causes the water from the surface of the condenser coils to evaporate and absorb the latent heat of evaporation from the remaining water to cool it though most of the cooling takes place by evaporation the air can also absorb some sensible heat from water as the heat for vaporization of water is taken from the refrigerant the vapor refrigerant condenses the cold water that drops down into the sump is recirculated by using pump so this water is again recirculated through this pump for water spray in order to make up the deficiency caused by the evaporated water additional water that is make up water is supplied to the sump a float valve in the sump controls the make up supply this is the drift eliminator it is provided above the spray header and it stop particles of water escaping along with the discharge air so this is all about the working of evaporative condenser so next are refrigerant evaporators the main function of an evaporator in a refrigeration system is to convert the low pressure low temperature liquid refrigerant into vapor refrigerant classification of evaporators can be given as based on method of recirculation they can be further classified as natural convection type forced convection type based on methods of refrigerant feed they are classified as dry expansion type evaporator flooded type evaporator liquid overfeed based on type of construction they are classified as bell tube plate surface or pinned type of evaporator liquid chilling evaporators can be further classified as double pipe bodlet shell and coil shell and tube tank type evaporators among these discussing few important type of evaporators so first of all flooded type of evaporator it is important to note that why it is called as flooded type of evaporator so in a flooded type of evaporator a constant refrigerant liquid level is maintained a float valve is used as the throttling device which maintains a constant liquid level in the evaporator so the inside surface is wetted with liquid thus this type is called as flooded evaporator the heat transfer efficiency increases because the entire surface is in contact with the liquid refrigerant the heat transfer efficiency increases because the entire surface of the tubes is in contact with the liquid refrigerant and therefore flooded evaporator is more efficient the flooded evaporator is equipped with an accumulator or surge tank or surge drum that serves as a liquid reservoir from which the liquid refrigerant is circulated by gravity through evaporator circuit the liquid level in the accumulator is maintained by a low side or high side float control and vapor generated by boiling action of the refrigerant in the tubes is separated from the liquid in the upper part of the accumulator and is drawn directly to the suction line along with the flash gas that results when the pressure of the refrigerant is reduced from the condenser to evaporator pressure it should be noticed that flash gas never enters the heat transfer portion of the evaporator which happens in case of dry expansion evaporator Refri as evaporator is filled with liquid refrigerant charge is relatively large as compared to dry expansion type in flooded type the vapor from the evaporator will not be superheated but will be at saturation to prevent liquid carry over to the compressor accumulators are used in conjunction with flooded evaporator so this is example for flooded type of shell and tube evaporator now next is direct expansion type shell and tube evaporator 
So in dry expansion evaporator, the liquid refrigerant is generally fed by an expansion valve. The expansion valve controls the rate of flow of refrigerant to evaporator in such a way that all the liquid is vaporized and vapor is also superheated to the limited extent by the time it reaches the outlet. The expansion valve controls the rate of flow of refrigerant to evaporator in such a way that all the liquid is vaporized and vapor is also superheated to the limited extent by the time it reaches the outlet end of the evaporator so that refrigerant vapor only enters the suction line. The refrigerant flow control employed with this method of feed is usually either a thermostatic expansion valve or a capillary tube. So this is the diagram for direct expansion type shell and tube type of evaporator. So here we are not able to see the location of expansion valve but in case of dry expansion evaporator the liquid refrigerant is generally fed by an expansion valve only. Now it is evident that the refrigerant in the latter portion of dry expansion evaporator is nearly in the vapor state and that this portion of evaporator will not perform as effectively as the inlet portion of evaporator where refrigerant is largely in liquid state. For this reason the surface temperature of dry expansion evaporator is always lower near the refrigerant inlet and highest near the outlet. While dry expansion evaporators are somewhat less efficient than flooded or liquid overfit types, they are usually much simpler in design and are lower in initial cost. They are much compact, require much smaller refrigerant charge and have fewer oil return problems than the other types. Therefore, this is the most popular type of evaporator. So, this is the shell and coil type of evaporator whose functioning is much similar to the shell and coil type of condenser. So, next are the bodlet type of evaporators. So, this type of evaporators consists a series of horizontal pipes one under another connected to form a circuit. They can be either dry or flooded. Refrigerant flows through the tubes while chilled liquid flows in a thin film over the outside in counter flow direction. This is then collected in a trough at the bottom of the cooler or evaporator. These type of evaporators were generally used for cooling milk, wine and water since it is possible to chill to very nearly freeze point without damaging equipment. Next are direct expansion fin and tube type of evaporator. So these are nothing but the plate fins and tubes are embedded in between these plate fins. So this is refrigerant inlet and this is refrigerant outlet. The working of this type of evaporator is much similar to the fin and tube type of condenser. Next is double pipe type of evaporator. So working of this type of evaporator is also similar to the working of double pipe type of condenser. Thank you.